Hello, in this video we're going to do some example problems using the Herod Domar model. We're going to start with an aggregate production function given by the following where real national output equals a minimum of k divided by 5 or l divided by 10. Again, y is real national output or income, k is physical units of capital, l is units of labor. We're going to assume in this economy that the real saving rate is 20%. 20% of income, so the saving rate equals 0 0.2 times y, aggregate output, aggregate income. And the growth rate of the labor force is 4%, so L grows at 4% a year. So problem one, at time period zero, assume that capital is 40 and labor is 80. In time period one, we want to solve for the level of capital, level of labor, and level of output. So to get started, we're going to calculate the level of output at time period zero. So we're going to plug 40 and 80 into our production function. And 40 divided by 5 is 8. 80 divided by 10 is 8. So the minimum of 8 and 8 is just 8, so this economy will produce 8 units of output in time period 0. Now we're going to calculate the saving. So saving is going to be 20% of income or output, so 0 0.2 times 8 is 1.6. And real investment spending then will be 1.6 investment equals saving. Moving on, the level of capital at time period 1. K subscript 1 will be the level of capital in the earlier period, in the last period, plus the level of investment spending that adds to our capital stock. So in this case, 40 plus 1.6, we get 41.6. The quantity of labor at time period 1. So L subscript 1 is just going to be the quantity of labor last period times 1 plus the labor force growth rate. And in this problem, we said the labor force growth rate is 4%. So 80 times 1.04 is 83.2. And plugging our level of capital and labor in period 1 into our production function, we see that output will be 8.32 units in period 1. So we are at a steady state equilibrium. Output, capital, and labor are all growing at a rate of 4%. So the output went up from 8 to 8.32. That is a 4% increase. Capital went from 40 to 41.6. That is a 4% increase. And our labor force went from 80 to 83.2, another 4% increase. All right, let's do another problem. So problem two, at time period zero, we have these values for capital and labor. And yeah, same production function, same saving rate. But this time, let's assume that the labor force growth rate increases to 5% instead of it was at 4%. It's going to increase now to 5% in period one. So in time period one, solve for the level of capital and output. We also want to solve for the quantity of labor supplied and quantity of labor demanded along with the level of unemployment. So there's going to be unemployment now. So using our values at time period zero, this economy produces eight units in time period zero. The real savings rate, as we saw before, is just going to be 0 0.2 times the level of output, 1.6. So our real investment spending, once again, is 1.6. The level of capital at time period 1, we saw this before, going to be the level of capital in time period 0 plus our level of investment spending, or now 41.6. As for labor, to get the quantity of labor supplied at time period 1, we're going to use this formula here. So L subscript 0 is 80, the labor force growth rate is now 
So we'll have a quantity of labor supplied of 84 units in time period one. Plugging those values, 41.6 and 84, into our production function, output is going to be the minimum of 8.32 or 8.4, so it's going to be 8.32. And this means that we're using, we, we, we don't need to use 84 units of labor to produce 8.32 units of output. So there is an excess supply of labor. The quantity of labor demanded, the labor units required to produce 8.32 units, is going to be less than 84. So again, recalling our production function, what we're going to do here to get the quantity of labor demanded, we're going to take this L divided by 10 and set it equal to the amount of output that we're actually producing, 8.32. So the quantity of labor demanded will look like this. Solving for L, 10 times 8.32, the amount of labor demanded will be 83.2 units. So we have unemployment of 0 0.8 units, 84 minus 83.2. So the economy is characterized in this case by increasing unemployment. All right, let's do one, one more example. In example three, same setup, but this time the labor force growth rate decreases to 3%. So in time period one, we want to solve for L subscript one, Y subscript one, and we're going to solve for the quantity of capital available and the quantity of capital used. We're going to see there's going to be a surplus of capital and excess, there'll be excess capacity characterized in, by this, in this economy. So getting output in period zero, getting saving and investment in period zero, same story as before. Getting the quantity of labor at time period one. So with a 3% growth rate in the labor force, we'll have 82.4 units of labor for period one. And now let's get the level of capital available at time period one. Again, we've seen this before, uh, level of capital in time period zero plus the investment, 41.6. Let's plug these values into our production function. And we have the minimum of 8.32 or 8.24. So output will be 8.24 in this case. And if output is 8.24, we don't have to use all the capital that is available. So the level of capital used at time period one, how much we actually have to use, is going to be calculated by taking K divided by five and setting it equal to our output. So multiplying through by five, five times 8.24, the level of capital used or actually demanded will be 41.2, which is less than the capital available. So we have excess capacity here of 0 0.4 units of capital. All right, that's my example, so I hope you found this video helpful.